Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. Right now I'm in Bilbao, a beautiful city in northern Spain, just a little cold. I'm here to discover the city, visit some museums, and also to see the FIG Bilbao Art Fair. That is an art fair focusing on works on paper, like itching, silk printing, uh, lithography, or shinkoli, you name it, as long as uh, the paper is the medium, is the support, uh, is the scope of uh, the art fair. Right now I'm in front of the Palacio Yuscatona, the Basque Country Palace where the art fair is taking place. Let's get inside. I want to show you the art and to have a quick discussion on the challenges of selling works on paper because that's not an easy business to get into. If you're an artist and you tried, I'm probably sure you know better than me. Um, <laughs> it's cold. Let's get inside. Now we are inside. In the foyer, you can see the cubics. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> I see uh, Universidad de Politecnica de Valencia, which is uh, my school, and the Escuela de Arte de Oviedo is another uh, very famous art and artisan school in Oviedo, another city in northern Spain that I have visited last month. So what a coincidence! I feel like I, you know, know them all already. Uh, yesterday I was here for the opening. It was so many people, so noisy. I couldn't really record any voice. Um, so I decided to take it easy and come back today to show you in a better setting, quieter, more sunny. And I will not really show my face again because I have uh, received comments on this channel saying like, hey, you know, we don't want to see your face, we want to see more art. All right, no offense taken, so I will just, you know, talk, not bother you with my face again. Here, going down the staircase, you see the actual uh, Fig Bilbao Art Fair. So I heard the gallerist saying that this year the booths are bigger, so they look more, you know, high-end, more put together. And yesterday it was all packed. I really couldn't um, hear anything. I think it would be too much a challenge of my microphone. So now it's the lunch break and not so many people. I will walk you over different uh, galleries and then um, I will be talking a little more about uh, selling works on paper. Galleria Fontana from Segovia. DDR Art Gallery. They must be wondering, uh, you know, who is this person with a camera? Because I've been passing them like, you know, a lot of times. It's like, I don't even know how many times. Oh, okay, there's a sound. I didn't know, I tried to listen, but I didn't hear anything. Galeria Luis Burgos from Madrid. And Fig Bilbao's merchandise. Pervy Gallery from Lisbon. I think they have the largest booth. It's huge. All the way to the end, it's uh, their space. And they use the space so well. And this is a... Uh, Artist Studio Gallery from Madrid. Yesterday I met Nut Penny, this artist. Projecto Ace from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Cute stickers. Hello. What's your name? Maite. Nice to meet you, Maite. Maite Pinto. This booth, it was so packed yesterday, I couldn't really see the art. And now I can see how it actually looks like, this piece. Edición is 4x4 from Bilbao. And they have uh, the uh, plate. I like the fact that they are showing the, uh, the tools. It shows more rough 
like working process. This is a theory that focuses on, I would say, uh, the criticism of social media. Galeria Lombreras from Bilbao. Instantes Gráficos from Buenos Aires. You see uh, it's different layers, like a uh, monthly calendar. I don't know if it's a good analogy, but yeah, it reminds me of. And here, on a world map. Invisible. Galeria Juca Claret. Zometa Arte Studios. Talle Manera Negra. Centro de Edición, Buenos Aires. Taller M.I. Santizo, from Madrid. Oh, look at this. They're showing uh, the price as well as the technique. People are very uh, passionate what they do, and they could just talk forever <laughs> about, you know, different techniques and how they created those artworks. I'm already lost <laughs> in the different aisles, so um, later on I'm gonna go around and do another complete tour, so to show you works that I've um, missed right now. Here you see the Torculos, the pressing machine. M.A. Arte Contemporaneo from Mallorca. Galeria Cesar Sastre. Passe Galeria from Bilbao. And I have had a very interesting conversation with them, CPS, Centro Portuguese de Serigrafia. So they are not just the uh, gallery, but also a club a uh, club of art lovers uh, that support artists on a monthly basis. Imagine Patreon, but without Patreon, before Patreon even existed, like 35 years ago. Hello. Hello. And they have um, a very nice collective of supporters of art. They contribute on a monthly basis. I believe right now it's like 43 euro and they will be able to trade the points, like monthly contributions as like mileages, uh, as um, part of their purchasing, you can deduct or you can just treat the points with the works. And they have very nice techniques. So it's a, a building uh, that allows artists to basically uh, use different machines to talk with different technicians to be able to produce works not in isolation. And then in their magazine, you can see uh, new editions, new works, and how much you'll be able to acquire them, how long time you wait until you can like trade. 
and it's a, a very large booth all the way here. You can see more. It's not in a language I could read, so I can't tell you what it's written, but at least I can show you the art. This collection is about women. I think mujeres, no? So, women. <laughs> Print Lab, Biodesign Center, oh, nice. It's the smallest booth, I think, so I really didn't pay attention yesterday. I didn't like notice them, but now that I've seen the name Biodesign, it's like, it's cute. Hmm, and this, Aldama Fabri Gallery has one of the most striking pieces from an artist born in 1993. Oh my goodness, I feel so old now. And this is the uh, sketching, the research, and this is the end result. And as you can see, the price, hmm, 6,800. And then there's another artist work here. just found this beautiful corner very quiet and now I want to have a chat with your guys about the challenges of selling works on paper and I think by far the biggest challenge is that your works on paper might look like replicas um, like editions open editions just a print let's say uh, maybe you know it's a very laborious a very unique process how you created uh, this piece of etching or lithography footprint but people don't know uh, they would walk past your work and they would think oh you know it's too expensive for a print or they think oh it's nothing special it's just a print but this is not the case for you as an artist but you know how are you going to have a chance to explain this how can you actually make an impact and make a distinction from other prints I think one of the best way is to uh, leave traces of uh, manual labor work, let's say the brush strokes. Um, you can also call it hand embellishment. In one of the art fairs that I visited, I saw a Chinese artist who is making it in front of the collectors who are passing by, and it's a wonderful idea. You, know, you could totally do that. Leave the last finishing touch until a collector is there. Like in art fair, you come and you make intervention on top of your works on paper to make it look more unique, to show the whole process. And also you can uh, write uh, very uh, obviously uh, the numbers like it's not open edition is one out of ten you know it is uh, one out of fifty so people also could see uh, that it is uh, scarce right there is a limited amount of uh, editions available and the second thing would be that works on paper uh, might feel very light when you're holding it it feels like something very fragile doesn't last long you know it could feel like not an object not like uh, a piece of painting with a thick frame, not like a sculpture, obviously, like sculptures, you know, <laughs> it's very solid, like bronze, like uh, inox, like, yeah, you get the idea. So what can you do to counter this um, disadvantage? The easiest way is to frame it, of course, and that is something that everyone is doing in art fair. You see, you know, it's mainly framed. That you can buy it with frame or without frames. But yeah, it's uh, it's something very common that everybody's already doing. Therefore, probably, you know, it's not the best way. Or well, you could still offer frames. That's not a problem. But that shouldn't be the only distinction from a sculpture or painting. It could be a very special presentation, like very large works. You know, if it would be paintings, it would be enormously hard to carry more around, but because it's paper, you can roll it. 
you know, like the Chinese rolling watercolor painting. I don't know how to say that in English, but you know what I mean. So that could be a way, like Sir Hill, the artist, you know, he has this large, enormous triplet works and is very easy to transport, I could imagine, right? So that could be something. You could also make works on paper on top of something else. Like photography, alu di bon, you know, is on top of aluminium, so it's something more solid, you know, feels more high end, you know, that could be a thing. You can put on mold, on wood, on anything, right? So that could be another thing, but depending on how you want to present your work, right? Obviously, you're not going to say, oh, because I want it to look substantial and expensive, therefore I'm going to put it on, on something that maybe doesn't fit the sensation, right? the actual uh, message that you try to convey in your art. You have to choose uh, a material that suits. Last but not the least, there is, admitted or not, a glass ceiling when it comes to uh, works on paper. You can't sell it too expensive because the market is like that. The same artist, let's say Picasso, works on paper is always cheaper than his paintings. I would you know, expect young artists to you know, also you know, sell their works on paper a little cheaper than their other works. Uh, with a different media. So it's almost like um, viewing versus Iberia. Uh, I know it's not a good example, but yeah, like one is a cheaper airliner of a larger company. So you want to make this lower end uh, line of products. And that is usually uh, how works on paper uh, are located in the, uh, the whole ecosystem of uh, art market. How are you going to fight it? My advice is not to fight it because it has been like this for hundreds of years it will not change from you <laughs> i'm not saying like don't do it but like admit that okay works on paper are cheaper so use that use it as an advantage not a disadvantage not a discount factor let's say you know you have new collectors you want to uh, occupy the lower market segment because you know you want to introduce your work to younger collectors who might not able to afford your more expensive works therefore you use it as a almost like a merchandise I know that you might not want to sell merchandise because you feel like you know ah, that's Mercs I don't want Mercs imagine like this is a Kuka uh, an artist she gave me this and she told me this is a residual byproduct from her uh, demos and trials and you know it's just like a waste scrap paper and she decided to uh, make pressing and uh, stamping on the back of the scrap paper to make it a name card and she gives it away to uh, passersby in the art fair you could do the same utilize the fact works on paper uh, generally uh, cheap to produce easy to carry use the qualities of paper as something that you could um, market yourself or sell cheap, right? So it doesn't cost you a lot to produce it. Therefore, sell it cheaper and make young collectors fall in love with your work, give away a piece of something for people to remember you. Why not? So again, before finishing this video, I just want to quickly remind you of one thing is that usually when you decide to work on paper, you need to fully distinguish from other works. It could be the way to produce, the way to price, the way to uh, sell, like street artists, right? They decided to make pay stops or stickers. You should fully utilize the advantages, explore. You know, it's very cheap to produce and fast to paste and then you just run away and the police will never catch you. Fair enough, you know, utilize this quality of paper integrated into your production process. Gallerists could do the same, like uh, the, uh, the Centre Portuguese of Cityography, CPS. I think they have figured everything out, you know. After 30-ish years of working in this business, making prints, you know, they're like, you know what, we don't want to come across being cheap, so we are going to make a community for artists, for collectors, monthly fee contribution, and then they can treat a piece of work they like, and the artist would be paid. After working out of the center, they have money in their pockets, 
and they leave their works in the center for the members to choose. And it's a um, win-win, and they also have a large team of 20 plus people, and they can pay a fixed salary to all of their workers, the masters. Because the fact that art prints are easy to carry, they're relatively cheap to produce, and easy to make mutables, they can make their thousand member happy. And if it would be paintings, it would be much harder, because they can't replicate so, so much uh, and so fast. So, you know, utilize uh, fully the qualities and uh, make sure that uh, you don't uh, use works on paper as a plan B, like, ah, oh, I can't do anything else, therefore I make a sketch. No, you know, it could be something conscious, mindful, <laughs> mindful. This sounds like weird, like mindfulness. But yeah, mindful and uh, as a choice, not as a what else can I do, right? Not a compromise. Yeah, before finishing this video, I want to quickly give a big shout out to our lovely patrons. Thank you very much for your support. And of course, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have questions regarding um, marketing your art, selling your art, uh, let me know in a comment below and see you in the next.